Hello everyone, welcome back to CAR Entertainment, I'm your host Don Hamilton guys and today we're going to be doing new revision videos. Yes we are, we have been doing A21 Biology which we have now finished and we're moving on to doing A22 Biology whenever we can and we've been going along at a steady nice pace with business studies doing A21 and A22 there. But now we're going to do A21 Digital Technology and you will know from your spec that AS, you had AS1 and AS2, but in year 14 or upper 6, you only have A21 in terms of an exam because your A22 is a controlled assessment. So, um, the weighting is for my specification, uh, I don't know about your specification, but for the CA specification that I know of, if you do do A22 digital technology, I will be unable to provide a video because I don't study that myself. I only do A21, but I'll provide every slight little bit. And even if you do do A22 uh, digital technology and as an exam based thing for you, then um, go and watch these videos because some of the topics might be an A22 for you that we cover. So we'll get into it. Our first topic is going to be artificial intelligence, and this is going to be quite interesting. So artificial intelligence, let's give you a quick introduction. Well, what is artificial intelligence, always known as AI, and I will refer to it as AI throughout the video. Well, AI is something that considers all aspects of intelligence and then it models these using computer systems. The aim of AI is to create an intelligent machine which can function and react like a human by learning and adapting. AI makes computers act like humans. Now, AI uses thing called cognitive science, and this is concerned with understanding the human mind through processes. Scientists will study the area using computer models of information, and these processes explain how, human, how, how the human mind functions. Now, there's different applications of AI. AI can be applied in different ways. It can be using expert systems, which we'll talk about in a different video. It can be using image processing, speech recognition, which we'll talk about in a different video, and machine learning. There's different advantages and disadvantages you need to know about AI. Uh, the advantage is that AI can perform jobs better than humans, uh, and this is useful whenever there's little room for error. And um, this is not always the case, but more often than not, AI will do it better than a human just because it's a computer doing it. But that human error sometimes is needed, uh, and humans can do a lot of jobs better than AI as well. Uh, another advantage is that you can allow computers to perform. It allows computers to perform difficult but repetitive jobs that humans do, so it takes away the mundaneness of a uh, human doing the job and they get bored doing it. Computers won't do that, so they can do this over and over and over. And if it's a very difficult job as well, we also know the AI will perform better and therefore there's less chance of human error. And then the final advantage is that AI robots in the home can help the elderly or people with disabilities. The disadvantage is that if an AI makes a mistake accidentally, then this can pose a danger to humans. If AI becomes widespread, it means the jobs will be lost for humans. And if AI develops beyond the capability of human, then it could mean the end of mankind. And yes, that's a bit far-fetched, but it is a disadvantage nonetheless. So the Turing test then, a man called Alan Turing came up with us here. If you don't know him, Alan Turing was a man in the Second World War. He basically came out and created the Enigma Code and all that there. But he basically invented AI, essentially. Uh, and he made this test called the Turing test. And it's a test that determines if a machine's behavior is indistinguishable from a human's response. The test involves a player, a human, and a machine, where the player doesn't know which is the human and which is the machine. The player will then ask questions to the human and the machine, and they will both give answers, and that, therefore the player will try to discover which is the human one. The criticism, though, is that the Turing test is a measure of intelligence, and it doesn't really assess the correctness of a response given, but only how similar they are to a human response. So a neural network model then, we're going to go through different, we're going to go through a neural network model which is a way of using AI. So a neural network model is a model that, of, of the human brain that consists of a collection of nodes which are linked by one-way and two-way connections. Each node will calculate a weighted sum of inputs and then provide an output. This is where backward propagation is used. Now a neural network will consist of many things which we will go into in the next slide about how is it learned and all that there, but I would, although they're not highlighted in red, do sort of learn them at the same time because you can't be asked what the neural network uh, consists of. So, they consist of artificial neurons called units. Input units will then receive information. So, these artificial neuron or a unit will be an, well, an input unit which receives information. Then, a hidden unit will process the input that the input unit holds. So, the input unit gives this input to the hidden unit which then processes it. And then, an output unit will provide a response from this. A neural network is not programmed to learn explicitly, it will learn by itself. 
So how does the neural network actually learn then? Well, patterns of information will enter the network via these input units, triggering layers of these hidden units then to arrive, and then the output units will then trigger. Not all the units will fire at the same time. Inputs into a unit will be added together if the sum is above a given threshold value, and this will fire the units connected to it, and this is called feed-forward networking. Feedback is also important in a neural network if learning takes place, and feedback and the feedback process in here is known as back propagation. The output produced by a neural network it will be compared to the output it was meant to produce to make sure it produces the same, the correct thing. So let's turn back propagation. And what does it do? Well, it reduces the differences between the actual and intended output, and this causes learning to occur. So machine learning, that bottom bullet point way, way back in the neural the start about how um, an application of AI. Well, machine learning is a way of applying AI, and that is the popular modern day technique for creating software that learns from data. And there's three core types of it. There's unsupervised, supervised, and reinforcement. And that incorporates a thing called deep learning, which is a specific approach to using neural networks, essentially a neural network with lots of layers. This is what deep learning is. Now, it is a technique that has led to the popular service as we today, including speech recognition on smartphones and Google's automatic translation. So that's how machine learning is incorporated in these applications. Thank you for watching this video on AI. Join us next time for the next iteration of Digital Technology A21 revision videos. I'll be Don Hamilton from CAO Entertainment, and I will see you next time.